Season's greetings, everyone. This is Steam Team Rita WK, CC Trainer Ling, and I'm back to bring you another episode review from Season 7 of The Loud House. So let's get right into it. Today's episode is Twas the Fight Before Christmas. Twas the Fight Before Christmas and all through the house. Okay, now that the obvious joke is out of the way, let's get to that plot summary. In this episode, Lincoln teams up with his sisters and their cousins to put an end to a long-standing feud between Lynn Sr. and his brother Lance by getting them together for Christmas. Before anyone asks, no, I am not going to spend time debating when this particular episode takes place in the Loud House timeline given how many Christmas-related episodes there have been since the second season. It's honestly not worth the time or headaches trying to think everything through, so I'm just accepting the fact this episode takes place place following the season 5 time skip, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Anyway, one of the biggest highlights of the episode would be the introduction of more Loud family relatives. Something I didn't think the series was ever going to touch upon again following Leonard's official on-screen debut two seasons earlier. We get the official introduction of Lynn Sr.'s athletic gym-owning brother Lance after technically debuting in the season 3 episode Home of the Fave. We also see his family consisting of his wife Sharon and their three kids Shane, Shyla, and Shelby, all of whom share Lance his passion for physical fitness. Interesting note, Rita is the only one in her immediate family whose name doesn't begin with the letter L, and Lance is the only one in his immediate family whose name doesn't begin with the letter S. Just randomly throwing that out there. Now, even though Lance and Shelby get the most screen time compared to the other three, all five family members come off as genuinely interesting, with the kids displaying some very familiar loud family traits. First, there's Shane, who has a natural gift for singing, like Luna. Then there's Shyla, who has no fear when doing death-defying cannonballs in the house, something you can definitely imagine Lynn Jr. doing. And finally, there's Shelby, who is simply, for lack of a better term, adorkable. Basically, she's the dorky yet adorable combination of Luann and Lisa, which of course includes giving her buck teeth and glasses. I don't know why, but something about her character making her Santa sweater talk and spinning around when brainstorming ideas just strikes the right balance of Luann's goofiness and Lisa's intelligence. Although that last one is debatable since she's not good with driving directions, but more on that part of the story later. But yeah, out of all the new family members, Shelby is definitely my favorite of the bunch, and it's very easy to see why. Anyway, we find out both Lynn Sr. and Lance fake injuries every year so they don't have to see each other after a fight they had five Christmases ago. It all started when they were playing a game of White Elephant, and Lynn opened a present containing a spatula, something his character would actually enjoy using. Lance decided to steal the spatula, and yes, you can steal a gift in this game, and this led to the two brothers fighting like they always have since they were kids. This fight resulted in Lance's exercise ball getting destroyed, and they vowed to never speak to each other ever again. This feud pretty much explains why Lance and his family have never been seen interacting with Lynn Sr.'s family, let alone never referenced by Lincoln or anyone else at any point in past seasons. Think back to all those many family birthday episodes and it'll all start to make sense. Now, even though I was expecting their feud to be more connected to Lynn's hurt feelings about his dad favoring Lance over for him, as mentioned in Home of the Fave, I actually like this idea a lot more. Yeah, it may be an overdone and cliche concept to have siblings fighting and competing with the older brother always messing with the little brother and vice versa, even as adults, but this is actually very relatable since I know what it's like to fight and compete against the sibling. It's a pretty common thing, and by Loud House standards, a sibling rivalry over anything and everything is to be expected. At least Rita and Sharon don't hate each other, so that's good. Anyway, with some assistance from their grandfather, the kids trick their dads into showing up at Camp Mastodon on Christmas Eve without letting them know their brother is going to be there. Obviously, both brothers are mad when they do see each other, but they decide to stay at the camp in an effort to try and make things work for their families. Unfortunately, it doesn't take long for them to start fighting and competing when doing family activities. After fighting about how to sing correctly and who can make the bigger and better snowman, they begin laughing and getting along after reminiscing about the many Christmas tree mishaps from their past. Apparently, Leonard has a history of bad luck when cutting down Christmas trees, and yet all those instances got Lynn and Lance to stop fighting and start acting like loving brothers. Thanks to the latest tree-cutting mishap, it looked as if their feud was going to end since they actually forgot why they started fighting in the first place. Of course, they do end up remembering why they were fighting when Lynn sees his brother using and destroying the infamous Christmas spatula while killing a spider, and he assumes Lance broke it on purpose. So these two began destroying each other's property, and thus their feud divided them again. Quite literally, by by then 
dinner time. That's when Shelby came up with the idea to buy a new spatula and exercise ball and say their dads bought each respective gift as a token of reconciliation. So she, Lori, and Lincoln sneak off to the store while the others make sure the parents don't find out they're missing. Unfortunately, due to Shelby's terrible sense of direction, she and her cousins get off the road and eventually end up on a frozen lake that's on the verge of cracking. Funny how they were running on a sheet of ice for a good 10 seconds and never slipped once. So that's when they contact their family to let them know what's happening and Lynn and Lance race over to the lake to save their kids. They put aside their bitter feelings for one another and work together to save their kids by using both clever innovation and the three different types of strength that bring complete balance and harmony into one's life. I didn't catch this the first time, but when I went back and rewatched it, the little mantra with Lance and Sharon talking about strength and mind, body, and soul came into play when the dads were rescuing their kids. Lance came up with the idea to use a zipline, strength and mind. Lynn had the right body weight to use the rope to get across the lake, while Lance had a strong enough physique to pull both him and the kids to safety, strength and body. And of course, both dads demonstrated their strength and soul when they realized their love for their kids superseded anything they were previously fighting about. Saving their kids created a moment of self-reflection, and thus all three strengths brought complete harmony to Lynn and Lance, both individually and collectively. They realized they needed each other more than they thought, and chances are their kids would have been goners had they not worked together to save them. That's where we come to the ending, and I don't care how predictable or sappy it is. Lynn Sr. says he learned a valuable life lesson, which would be nothing is more important than family. Say what you want about how obvious of a sentiment it is, but it's the truth. When you see your kids are in danger, you come to realize how life is too short to be fighting and arguing over the little things. Had Lynn and Lance not put aside their petty feelings for each other, something really bad could have happened to their kids and not letting go of their massive egos would have been their ultimate downfall. The brothers agreed to put the past behind them, vowing to be there for each other no matter what, and their families finally got to celebrate Christmas together for the first time in five years. This leads me to my favorite moment of the episode, Luna and Shane in a duet as they perform the song, I Just Want My Family on Christmas Day. Even though it has a nice sentimental vibe and the singing is top notch, my only minor complaint is that it's incredibly short. However, much like the song from Eleven Louds a Leapin, it's not a big deal. It still gives off a warm, fuzzy feeling, and that's good enough for me. Overall, this was an amazing Christmas episode, and I don't know and don't care who agrees or disagrees. We got to see more extended members of the Loud family, and this gave some development to Lynn Sr.'s character by exploring his rivalry with his brother Lance. Their reasons for hating each other and how they go about fighting may seem totally ridiculous on the surface, but when you remember the many sibling-based elements of the show and how they're presented, it's actually not as bad as you think. The presentation of Lance and his family was pretty good, and as I said, Shelby was my personal favorite out of everyone. Most of Lincoln's sisters and Shelby's brothers don't play much of a significant role in the story, but they did provide a few eye-catching visuals. We got to see what they looked like five years in the past, or at least we got to see what some of them looked like in their younger days. And it was kind of funny seeing Lucy already dressed for a funeral in the off chance her family members fell in the lake. Thank God she was smiling and not looking depressed when everyone made it back safely. That would have been kind of scary. But anyway, the story was fantastic when it came to illustrating the importance of family, especially the part about strength and mind, body, and soul being the keys to total harmony, and how you shouldn't let your foolish pride be the reason why your families can't see each other for the holidays. Sometimes it takes a tragic moment to realize what really matters in the world, and that's what Lynn and Lance learn by the end. Hopefully Lance can make a comeback at some point to see how his newly paired brotherhood with Lynn holds up. Even if Lance and his family are just one-offs for a Christmas special, they were the best holiday one-offs the series ever had. The only other thing I can say is that, at the time of this recording, this is, in my opinion, the best episode of Season 7. From a flashback being told through rhymes at the beginning to a short but sweet song by the end, I, for the life of me, cannot bring myself to hate this episode in any way. With that said, I give Twas the Fight Before Christmas a perfect 10 out out of 10. Well, folks, that concludes my review of Twas the Fight Before Christmas. So I gotta ask, what did you guys think of this episode? Sound off in the comments below, and be sure to click that subscribe button for more Loud House-related content. That's going to do it for me. I'll catch you guys for the next video, but until then, this is Steam Team Read Up UK, CC Trainer Ling, signing off. Peace out, home slices, and from my family to yours, have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all.